there certainly seems to be a common theme, at least to a lot of people today, talking about data collection. And uh, I think uh, anyone who saw me speak earlier today understands that, at least from a public health standpoint, and I've been working in, in global health for about 20-something years, um, there's, you, you can't overestimate the lack of data uh, that we have. I and mean, we, just, we just don't know, we just don't have data to, to do almost anything. We don't have the population data. We don't have anything that's up to date. I think what's been very interesting for, for me in developing our product, EpiSurveyor, which allows people to develop their own surveys on mobile phones and data collection instruments on mobile phones, with a, a skill level equivalent to what you might need for, you know, word processing, right? So it's not for programmers or technicians. It really makes it easy for anyone, for example, in this audience could easily go to the website and create a mobile phone survey. What's been, a few things have been really interesting to me. One of them is that um, uh, as a doctor, I'm concerned with health and global health and what we've, we designed what we thought was a tool for health. Um, I'm sure people have heard of the term, we've talked about a little bit, you know, M health or mobile health. Um, this is, you know, it's a big buzzword. Everybody's very interested in using mobiles for health. What we found out, though, um, is that because we made our tool so flexible, and when you think about it, if you create a, a, a program that allows you to collect, you know, that allows you to sort of enter questions and then go out into the field and collect the answers to those questions, uh, obviously there's no reason you can't ask any questions at all, right? It can be on any particular topic. And again, because, and I, you know, Ken's going to blush because I've, I've mentioned, I'm going to mention him now in both of my talks. So Ken Banks, who's sitting in the audience, who's, who developed Frontline SMS, a system for uh, transmitting information by SMS and retrieving information by SMS. One of the things that I liked about that product and which made it an, uh, an inspiration for what we've done with EpiSurveyor is really the fact that it does allow the user to determine what kind of information they want to collect. Of course, the, the great thing about that and the interesting thing and sometimes the puzzling thing is that you find that um, it is impossible for you, the developer of the software, to actually predict what the user's needs are and, uh, or what they're going to apply it to. And I think what happens in international development that is often a big problem is you have people sitting in Geneva and New York and Washington and other capital cities that you were mentioning who think that by going to, a, you know, by doing a field visit for two weeks, um, they can kind of suss out the problems in a country or what the important issues are and then design some sort of, you know, they say, well, this is the data we need. We're going to design a data collection system. Obviously, that, that never works. And what, what we find is by leaving it open to people to collect whatever data they want, as circumstances change on the ground, they can change. They can teach it to their friends who are working in other fields. We, we found in Kenya, where, where our software is developed, just, you know, not randomly, but I guess just... Uh, serendipitously, because Kenya, uh, as people know, is very well known for its wildlife, our staff who was doing trainings at places like UNICEF, et cetera, teaching them how to collect health data using the tool, they also happened to socially know some people who worked at conservation organizations, and now we have the Kenya Wildlife Service and the African Conservation Center and the Smithsonian Institution doing things like tracking mountain gorillas using this, you know, health software that we did, that we uh, created. You know, I, I think this is really a, another side of the same issue where we've seen you know, the whole thing with Facebook and Egypt and Twitter, where obviously it's not up to Mark Zuckerberg what you can put on Facebook or, um, you know, what one can tweet on Twitter. Um, it lets the user on the ground really determine what the priority is at a particular moment. It's taken us in very, very strange uh, directions. I had a conversation I was mentioning um, to Herman this morning uh, with a representative of an electric company in West Africa, they want to use the, this data collection system in order to create, uh, for their meter readers who go out and, you know, note the identification of a building uh, or a, a company, and then they note what the reading has been. The great thing about this is, because it's all one system, if those people pay us to use the system, that enables us to give away the free basic version to lots and lots of other organizations. So again, what we've really found, uh, what I think is quite interesting, is the more flexible you make it, um, the more you know, sustainable it is and the more it's going to scale because it will be useful for more things. I think another, and I'll just be brief, another thing we found quite interesting is recently we've, uh, our, whole, our whole model for data collection had really been kind of what you were describing with these DHS surveys, professional surveyors, professional interviewers going out into the field, uh, usually with paper and pencil, to uh, knock on household doors and ask how many children do you have and do you have a radio and all these other questions. The reason, of course, that's been the model for years is because people in those houses didn't have any communications equipment. 
and no way to communicate directly over distance. Of course, now, increasingly, we're finding that people in the villages, even, do have mobile phones. And so we added uh, their mobile phones, and this has been touched on many times, that are very basic, can only do voice and SMS in most cases. And uh, so we've added basic SMS data collection capability. And what that means now is we have this very tantalizing possibility of not having to visit the households at all. And you were, you were sort of touching on this, of getting information directly from uh, citizens, from people who are benefiting from aid, from patients, et cetera. We're working with a group called International Rescue Committee who uh, are using our SMS-based data collection system because they want, they, they, they've been collecting for years what they call vital statistics information, births and deaths in West Africa, in villages. It's very laborious. They have to go out into the field. They have to knock on doors. They have to talk to midwives. They noticed all the midwives had mobile phones. Now, this very month, they're piloting the use of text messaging where the midwife just sends two numbers every single week, the number of births in the village, the number of deaths in children under five in the village. They now have a very near real-time vital statistics system. So we've gone from getting an estimate of the, the number of children in Ghana and the number of births and deaths in Ghana um, and, and several other countries you know, every 10 year with the census supplemented by small surveys over the course of 10 years to having a near real-time understanding of what's killing children, how often are they dying, how often are they being born, which as you can imagine is really invaluable to, uh, to health and to lots of other things. So again, I would say that, you know, for us, the, the really interesting things that we've seen with mobile is the more flexible the tool is, the more potent it is. And also, uh, while we're designing an iPhone version of our software, we found that there's as much potential on the low end in the SMS and, and other kind of low end phone things as there is on the high end. But you are doing an iPhone. We, we're, we're developing an iPhone version now, but you know, we, our original kind of target audience for the software was health workers in Africa. Um, they don't have iPhones. They don't have iPhones, but that doesn't stop some organizations from developing software for them for iPhones. Uh -huh. Just like, um, you know, for years you would, you would see um, people developing educational tools for health workers in Africa mm -hmm. who didn't generally have web access, but because web was what organizations do or what they did or it was easy, people mm -hmm. would design all these very nice web-based tools neglecting the fact that people couldn't access the web to see those tools. That's right. Now that's changing also and a lot of health workers, especially mm -hmm. in the provincial level and above, do have access to the web. So you, know, you have to pay attention to see how the, the mm -hmm. technology is changing. But we really aimed at the low end first mm -hmm. and, are, and kind of now are or I would say the medium low end, the basic $40 phone. Mm. But now we're moving down toward the literally the $10 phone, mm -hmm. but also up to the iPhone and the, and the Android phone. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want people to have to, we don't want to have to tell people what hardware to use. Uh, if it's an iPod, iPad, that's great. Uh, we don't have an iPod version. Uh, <laughs> not sure what that would look like. But again, we don't want to tell people what kind of software. We want to design software that runs on the hardware that they actually already have mm -hmm. so they don't have to buy anything. Okay. Well, that was really interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Joel.